What's up everyone? So if you're looking forward to Aliens Fireteam when it releases this summer, there's some good news regarding the story. IGN has an article that lays out some connections this game has to other stories. They got to speak to some members from Cold Iron, like Head of Studio Craig Zinkiewicz, along with Creative Director Matt Hyacin and Narrative Designer Chris Latoile. Here are some points they laid out regarding the story. Aliens Fireteam is a cooperative shooter, but it's here to tell a new story too, and there's a cohesive narrative spread across its campaigns. Colonization has exploded. There's a lot of new developments. Your battalion is sent out to patrol the lawless frontier that exists out there. On the way, your ship picks up a distress call from LV-895. What happens next is pretty much your standard encounter with xenomorphs while using the pulse rifle. The game takes place in the year 2202. That's about 23 years after Alien 3, which took place in 2179. Alien Resurrection's timeline is in 2381, so Alien's fire team takes place between those two movies. One of the major events in our backstory is the passing of the Colonial Protection Act in 2187. That is a government reaction to what the companies were doing in the outer rim in the frontier. Basically saying, corporations have been running roughshod over everything out there, causing a lot of people misery. We're going to take a more active hand in this. The marine that you are using in the game is one of the colonial marines enlisting for this cause. It is a co-op survival shooter, but it's pretty heavily bent towards RPG. That's where a lot of Cold Iron's team comes from. You're not playing a preset person. We're trying to make it so you can inhabit the world yourself. We already know you'll be able to customize your weapons with different mods, attachments, and perks, but the Marines can also change their headgear. It says this, you'll be able to wear your cowboy hat or your classic colonial Marine helmet or awesome synth sunglasses. They mentioned that when they look at the films for a reference, they had to include more manufacturers for the guns in their game. It says this, In Aliens, there are about a dozen guns that are shown. We have about 30 guns in our game, and now 70 or 80 mods and attachments to customize those guns. We've been given the opportunity to expand upon what we've seen in the film, and when we started looking at that, we realized we needed to have multiple manufacturers for the guns and the gear in there. The article says the Aliens film had a few companies listed in the story, like Armat Battle Systems and Weyland Utani, which provided the Marines with their weapons. The Hyperdyne Systems was the company that created the Android Ash from the first film and Bishop in Aliens. In our timeline, they have a weapons manufacturing arm that provides guns to who's ever going to buy it, including colonists, corporations, and the UACM definitely buys their stuff because it's a little more experimental, and as a game, it lets us branch out a little from what was seen in Aliens. Each company that manufactures weapons goes back to who their allegiance is with. Armat Battle Systems is the primary supplier of the United Americas. Weyland Yutani is connected to the Anglo-Japanese Three World Empire, and Hyperdyne is more popular with the Union of Progressive Peoples. The UPP was mentioned in William Gibson's unproduced Alien 3 script, which did get a graphic novel produced, and I did cover that story already. They talk about the timeline and what's happening in their story. I mentioned before that the game will get a prequel story in the form of a novel called Aliens Infiltrator. In the future of the timeline, it has just gotten to critical mass. It's widely known that Will Yutani is the bad guy. It's pretty easy for us to start right off the bat with everyone knowing if Will Yutani is involved, something bad is happening here. While yes, you will get to shoot xenomorphs with a pulse rifle, that's not the only enemy type. There are over 20 different enemy types, all with different AIs and behaviors, a bunch of different xenomorphs, but you'll be fighting synthetics as well. You go up against Will Yutani militia security forces and they're using synths as their main fighting force at least where you encounter them in the frontier. When they bring up the life cycle of the aliens, it says here, we can expect something different this time. 
the xenomorphs have a particular life cycle which has been fairly well articulated in various media and background materials available, you will see some unique things in our game. The xenomorph is known to adapt to almost any environment. It is a survivor. The team would look at other sources of alien designs and see which ones could be used for a game. This is what it says. We got to poring over all the other extended universe things. The toys, the comics, the novels, and kind of picked and chose which would be an amazing creature to fight or if we needed a game mechanic. Is there a creature someplace we could use or do we have to make something new? It's common knowledge that the alien DNA takes genetic attributes from its host. The bipedal alien comes from a human host. The runner comes from a dog or ox, depending on which cut of the Alien 3 movie you watched. But this is where they bring up the other types of new aliens. Some of the Xenos in our game you'll see have abilities that haven't been seen elsewhere because they're from life forms local to the star system that the game takes place in. The Kenner action figures had explored various types of new aliens. They looked at some of these to possibly get inspiration or to update a current design. It says this, There's definitely stuff we pulled from, things we updated or that we've been inspired by. Mostly, those toys prove the strength of the IP. You can go pretty far outside of what was seen in Alien and still have it fit in Alien's canon as a whole. The story is meant to focus on its brand new characters as it takes place after Alien 3 when those characters are no longer alive and quite some time before Alien Resurrection. It says here, It's not a tourism game. We're going to brand new places. All of them harken back and refer back to iconic sets and iconic things. But we're not going to the same locations that you've seen in the movie. Here's the part in the article that mentions the game's connection to other sources. It says this, There are themes. There are things that happen in Prometheus and Alien Covenant that do show up in the game as well. I think we're planning on talking about those later, but we are pulling Prometheus and Covenant into the future of the timeline. I wonder if this has any connection as to why the design of the spitter alien in the game looks like the Neomorph from Alien Covenant, or does it look more like the Deacon from Prometheus? What do you think? The last thing they covered in the article is if we would see any predators in the game, but this was the response. It's an Aliens game. So that means no. Alright, so that covers the latest news on Aliens Fireteam. What I like the most about this article is when they mention that they found a way to connect Prometheus and Alien Covenant into the game. If you want to see more updates to Aliens Fireteam, just subscribe to my channel. I'm going to cover this game upon release, along with other things I like. Thanks for watching. This is Carlos or Acid Glow, and I'll see you next time.